I don't want to review this book, Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials, but I want to talk about it and talk about sort of a unofficial challenge that I gave myself a while back and I've slowly been working on. Um, in the 90s, I remember getting these pamphlets from the Science Fiction Book Club and one of the, you know, the, it's a membership club you, uh, you join, they mail you a book every month. Uh, you get so many books to start, like eight, I think it was eight books you get, you know, for, I don't know, like a dollar or something, but then you promise to buy, you know, 12 more books or whatever it was. Um, and, you know, one of the books they really pushed was this book. And it really is kind of a, a bit of a gem. It, it was a reprint uh, when I got it. It was originally printed in the, in 79, 1979, uh, reprinted. I think it's 86, and I have to look, because I don't remember. But in any event, so uh, basically what Barlow and Ian Summers uh, did is they went through a bunch of science fiction stories that they had read and tried to find aliens in these stories that they thought needed um like a physical representation, like what would this alien actually look like? So, you know, they took it upon the task of sort of giving form to these things. Um, all of the illustrations are interesting. Some of them are more appealing than others. Um, yeah, 87 is the reprint. Um, so there's 50 aliens in this book and some of the aliens that are shown have uh, one book mentioned for them. Sometimes they have multiple books. Um, it's a pretty wide selection of science fiction. I wouldn't say that it's a very holistic representation of science fiction, but it's not bad. Um, certainly, the, there's, there's talk in the introduction about only picking aliens that have like a scientific explanation or um, that could reasonably exist. And that's sort of true i don't know their criteria is a little suspect um but that's neither here nor there um so sort of a a thing i've been working on for a while one thing i'd always thought would be kind of neat to do is to have read all of these stories um that are mentioned uh in this book so i've slowly been doing that and so this is sort of to make it a little more official for myself and then also if somebody wanted to read along like you um you can try it too this particular book is not that hard to find um it's out of print i think so you're gonna have to get it second hand uh, through amazon or ebay or something similar they made a lot of them I don't know about a first edition. That might be kind of hard to find. But the second edition, like I said, it was printed in droves. Uh, I think you can probably find one for somewhere between, I would say somewhere between $15 and $25. Maybe even cheaper than that. With a little bit of looking, you could probably get a, a decent copy. Maybe it doesn't have the dust cover, but no, that's okay. Um, that's not the highlight of the book anyhow. So, I've read... Uh, on off and on uh, sought out books in this in this book and read the read them um, I'd say I've read maybe somewhere between maybe 20% of the stories mentioned here there's 50 aliens so I've probably read maybe 10 books maybe 8 or 10 books that this is mentioned um, so uh, this is sort of to give myself a little bit of a I don't know, accountability. So I have to kind of push myself to try and get this done, and which is what I've been doing lately um, as a precursor. And then I'd like to, as I read these books, talk about the book that I read and kind of show the alien. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, this is not going to be a true review of the book that I read either. Um, I'll probably try and come back and do that, but this is just sort of a, let's call it a sampler. So, what I read was Jack Chalker's Midnight at the Will of Souls. A little bit of um, honesty here. I didn't read this paperback, even though I own it. It was the uh, Audible uh, 
version of the book, which was very well done and I quite enjoyed. Um, the story is about this sort of strange amalgam world where, you know, thousands of different sentient life live in these hexagonal area, this hexagonal sort of uh, biomes. They're all connected, but they don't really invade each other exactly. And um, you have sort of high tech, very, sci very um, high science fiction type areas, and you have literal magical fairies as well. Um, without going into the plot of the novel, it's kind of adventurous. It's kind of a like a pulp adventure type story, and it's got some science fiction. It's more of it's more of a book of science fiction concept than it is a a real than it is real hard on science fiction. I know a, from what I've read of one of Chonker's interviews and just sort of from the other two books in the series that I've read. I've not finished the second book in this series, and in the middle of the third. Um, he seems to have a fascination or really a lot of interest in a couple things that are sort of interesting. One is not too surprising uh, when you have a, a planet with all these different alien species on it is that um, he sort of experiments with these sort of uh, forms of government and sort of social structure. So some aliens are insects and they have this, you know, in sort of uh, insect like uh, society in which some some are some are born breeders and that's their only purpose you know very ant-like or wasp-like in that sense um some of them are sort of sort of mental communes uh or sort of a uh, a borg-like you know one consciousness rules them you know controls the entire nation or population um so that's one thing that's not too surprising the other thing i think that's just kind of um, exotic, or I found kind of maybe a little bit unusual for a book of its time, is that there's a lot of uh, body and gender swapping and um, sort of uh, experimentation with what it means to be a, what, you know, with what kind of life form the main characters take. Uh, so, kind of um, pretty unusual. Why I say it's unusual is not so much that there's body swapping or gender swapping, but it's never really put in a negative light. Um, you have male characters who become female. You have female characters who wish to become male. You have characters who become androgynous, basically, or who become hermaphroditic. And while it's sort of it's sort of presented a little bit. I don't want to say salaciously, but it sort of is a little salaciously, but it's never really, um, it's never really looked at negatively or, you know, it's not sort of like, well, this person is, you know, now a different gender or her, or hermaphrodite, maybe it's not really put in a negative light. It's sort of that character usually is, is okay with it. Um, it's a lot more, that sort of stuff is a little bit more prevalent, or that idea is a lot more prevalent in the, um, in the second book, I think, which is uh, um, Exiles at the Well of Souls. But Midnight Through the Well of Souls is sort of like a, uh, a precursor, and then Exile at the Well of Souls and Quest for the Well of Souls, the next two books, um, which are actually one big book that got split in two by the publisher. At least that's what Chalker says. Um, so I imagine it must be sure why we lied with, uh, those definitely go a little deeper into that. And so, you know, while I found this unusual, I thought, well, maybe that was just his idea. He definitely revisits that. And from what I can tell in about some of his other books, it's not the only book or series that he visits that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, kind of a, pro I think a progressive viewpoint for the time period. So, um, uh, again, a, a very uh, fast-moving story, a little bit pulpish, not real hard on the science fiction, more about, like, science fiction in the sense of, like, let's let's look at this 
um, social structure or um, belief system and let's sort of um, remove it from any sort of uh, human inspiration that they might have come from and put it on this strange alien, right? So the source in Barlow's for this, the, the story that um, he picks, if he picks Chalker's Midnight the Well of Souls, he also picks a Exile of the Well of Souls as for another illustration, which is interesting. There's a few authors that get repeated. Jack Vance gets repeated as well, I know. Um, but uh, the alien that he picks for Midnight at the Well of Souls is a Sazil. And so this is a Sazil, according to Mr. Barlow. And um, it's basically like a, um, in the book, they're described as being this sort of like plant-like structure. Here, they're really, it looks like a minion <laughs> or something. I certainly didn't imagine it would be nearly as cartoonish. There's a lot more interesting scientific sort of illustration that he's doing on the uh, other page, the facing page, I should say. Um, but the, the core illustration is a little, it's a little silly. I mean, anyway, that's okay. He was having fun with it. I didn't quite view it that way. Um, so this is a good example of where the illustration quality is excellent, but maybe uh, uh, a little unusual. Uh, but that's kind of what's fun about it. So I've read that story. That's the one I can mark off in this book of 50. Um, and <laughs> I came in and I was like, let's see what it looks like. I couldn't remember at the time. I just knew it was in there. And I'm like, that did not, that did not look like the alien that I saw in my head. But that's okay. Uh, that's part of the fun of it, I guess. So um, I'd like to do a little bit more actual interesting and in-depth review of Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials. But if you've got the money, if you run across it, you should pick it up. It's just, um, just a, a really fun book. You know, great illustrations. There's a whole section on the back where Barlow shows... Uh, sketches for a book that I'm not really sure if he ever published or not, or if it got split into something else. Um, but his illustrations are fantastic. Um, and it's, you know, you can kind of uh, take that challenge on as far as you want to, you know, you can see how many of these stories you're able to pull up and locate and read. Um, obviously all these stories are from before the book was published. So 79. Um, so you're talking about a lot of stories from the 70s and 60s. I think it goes back even to some writing from the 30s and 40s, possibly. I know um, James Blish is in there, and I know, uh, but he, I think he wrote in the 60s. Um, Van Goat, who wrote uh, The Space Beagle, I think is in there. I, I want to say that he wrote um, a lot earlier than that. I think he's a much earlier writer, but... Anyway, some of those books, some of these stories may be hard to find. I've never done a, a holistic uh, search for everything in here. So, uh, you know, just know that you might have, if you decide to take this up, you might have to uh, do a lot of digging to find some of these volumes. A decent number of them are available on Audible. And I would say a decent number of them are still in print. Um, Midnight of the Well of Souls, I'm fairly certain you can get a, a new copy from Amazon. You don't have to, or whatever, or you know, a local bookseller. Um, you could probably even get your local library to grab a copy for you if you don't want to show any money, which you should always use the library as a resource. That's an excellent resource. Uh, they may even have a copy of uh, Barlow's Guide. You know, if you ask them, uh, they might buy one for you. In any event, well, hopefully I'll do more of this and, uh, We'll come try and revisit these and do a little more detailed look at them uh, without trying to spoil it. So, uh, all right, good reading.